Hey, I'm Mark Gingrass, and I signed up for the uh, Udacity Self-Driving Car Nano Degree Program. I wanted to give you a little bit of my journey through this session, or this term, as I go. I plan on video in maybe a couple minutes per day, or per couple days. So let me start with uh, me finding this Udacity site, and really, really, really debating whether this is going to be worth it or not. Well, my journey started with looking up the Georgia Institute of Technology, Georgia Tech, and their data analytics program. So it was somewhat cheaper than a regular master's program, but it was still a two-year program, and it's data analytics. And data analytics I really love, and I know that it's useful, but for some reason it's still kind of dry for me. Um, <clears throat> so I was in the middle of applying for that, and I'm actually, I finished the application process and even paid my $75 for it. But then I got to thinking, you know, I am getting a little bit older and I don't have that much experience with programming, but I love programming. So um, the fact that Georgia Tech partners with Udacity quite a bit with some of their programs, I was kind of intrigued by that. So I started looking into Udacity in itself, just doing, what if I just did a couple Udacity courses that were paid for, not the, uh, the free stuff that they offer. I, I started some of their free stuff, but I never finished it. I usually get in there and I'm like, ah, I can learn something better somewhere else or whatnot. Or YouTube. I use YouTube all the time. So I'm on a YouTube channel right now, as you can see, <laughs> because I'm trying to learn Python on the fly. So the Udacity site, when you sign up for the self-driving car program, there's an intro to self-driving car, which I thought might be a little bit too, uh, too beginner level for me. But if you do take the intro level to the self-driving car program, you're guaranteed admittance if you pass to the actual um, self-driving car program without the, the uh, introduction to it. I decided to skip that, even though I was a little bit concerned with my, my knowledge base. I, I have some C++ knowledge. I would say <clears throat> my C++ is the strongest one, but it's been years since I've used it. And I have only done academic level C++, probably to the point where, you know, multiple inheritance, um, uh, template programming a little bit, um, definitely, definitely object-oriented programming is really crucial for C++. So I have a grasp of that, and I understand it, and I know the basic syntax for sure. I learned R programming in a machine learning class I just took, which also got me really spun up on this whole machine learning AI stuff. I mean, it got me really excited. I took this course at the University of Central Oklahoma. Um, my professor was uh, Tyler Cook, and Professor Tyler Cook, and he was he was really good, and he demonstrated it. He's got a statistics background, so he, he demonstrated this machine learning through his statistics knowledge and the power of R. So we did a lot of stuff like support vector machines. We did the k-nearest neighbors, k-means, all that stuff. I know the terminology more than I know how to code it. I understand what's going on. I understand the big picture. But how to code it, I, I, did, I went through the homeworks. I did it, but I don't know it by heart. Uh, I could easily jump back into it. So I dabbled with Python just a little bit, and I thought, you know, this language is a lot easier than R, because R is definitely a wacky little language, but I like R a lot. It's pretty powerful and cool. But <clears throat> I put off Python for a long time because my actual work, where I work, doesn't have Python installed. They only have R. And <clears throat> uh, what I do for work has not, not much to do with programming, but it should. I'm an operations research analyst, and I, what I actually end up doing is dabbling with a bunch of data and uh, producing ad hoc reports, you know, using basic Excel formulas and Microsoft Access queries. So I'm not that much into technology yet, but I am a layman and I learn this stuff all the time. I watch YouTube videos left and right. I just haven't sat there and coded recently. Anyways, I signed up for this uh, Udacity deal three days ago. It's 800 bucks, uh, maybe four days ago, something like that. But it only took a couple days, which was the last day before I knew yesterday my class starts tomorrow, so it's only been a couple days. Anyways, I got accepted. I wasn't sure. You have to do a self-assessment. I did rate myself a little high on probably most of the stuff there, but it didn't seem like you needed that much uh, more than linear, maybe a little linear algebra, um, which I have some C++ and some Python. So now Python I embellished on. I said I was kind of intermediate, maybe, I don't know, level three out of five or something like that, when in fact I was pretty much level maybe one. I don't even know. But I jumped into it two days ago, and what I did was I went to this guy's website here, who's really pretty good, Corey Schaefer, 
he's got a Python tutorial. So what I do is I put my Python on one side, the tutorial on the other, and I play it. But I always play it at 1.5x or 1.25x. That's a huge hint. Go to this thing right here and just put it on a speed of something more than one, more than normal. That'll save you a lot of time because a lot of it's fluff. Um, <clears throat> So I dived through it and I got through the basic syntax. Uh, I understand how to do functions, I understand how to return values, but the little things, little nuanced things, he kind of explains pretty well. I'm like, oh, that's what that means. I was wondering what that means. I've dabbled in Python just a little bit. I read some Python book, uh, tried to jump into some TensorFlow, but without really having the basics of Python, it was a little difficult to follow. But So uh, I've got some exposure to it, so I figured I can catch up quick. So I, I can learn this stuff pretty quick. So I'm hoping that today I get into maybe building a couple of Python classes, um, and I want to jump into some NumPy. I haven't really dived into that yet. And what else? So that's my plan for today. And then I've got to do some other work. But these, I'm going to be extremely busy, and I am a very busy person. But I'm going to try to put these videos together uh, once or twice a week easily, give you my progress and what's going on. So with my background. And by the way, so get this YouTube video if you're interested. Um, I think they use OpenCV. I've tried this on my Macintosh, and it crashes it every time. So that's really bothering me quite a bit. Um, but uh, I don't know what it is. It might be operating system system specific. I have a Mac OS. It crashes, but I was really excited to get into this OpenCV stuff because that's going to be a lot of the video editing. Uh, get on GitHub. Get on Google. I noticed that there's a lot of all these projects out there. So the resources are there. I think I'll be fine. But the goal is I really want to learn something here. I want a project. I want a way to possibly, you know, if you want, if I want to, enter a new career field without making a pay cut, that type of thing. So let me... Uh, Wrap it up here, and we will talk soon.